Hey there folks, Gary Bradley here from Creative Frontiers and in this episode I'm going to show you how you can create realistic flames with a rather awesome filter that's built into Photoshop. If this is your first time visiting and you want to learn best practice techniques to create killer artwork, then start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss a thing. So I'm starting here with a regular JPEG, this is from Unsplash, you'll be able to download this image from a direct link in the show notes. I'm going to break this episode into two parts. So I'm going to focus, first of all, as quick and as straightforward as possible, how to create a flame inside of Photoshop. If you then want to take a look at how I made this kind of more sinister and green flamed and ghoulish looking, then you can hang around. I'll show you some couple of extra tips as well for that. Um, but without further ado, um, I am going to, first of all, go to my layers panel and alt and left click to create a brand new layer. I'm going to call this uh, Basic Flame. Uh, make sure that it's active in the layers panel because you'll always want to try and keep your flame separate from the original artwork to give you to give you that flexibility, really. Then you'll have to create a path to run your flames along. So if I go to the pen tool, um, or you can tap the P key in the keyboard down here for the pen tool. Um, up at the top, by default, Photoshop will want to create an additional shape layer. Now, that's not what we need in this case. You have to go to the drop-down menu and choose path. We just need an entity. Um, so click on that. Everything else in there is pretty much good to go. And then I need to create um, all of the paths for the eyes and the mouth. So I'll hover over here. Uh, I'll left click, let go of the mouse, click and hold down the mouse and drag to create a curve in here. And then come down to the bottom and then left click. Now, I don't want to run the flame across the front uh, between the eyes. So in order to disconnect, I'll hold down the command key or the control key on a PC and command and left click. I can then hover over here, left click, click and hold down the mouse and drag and create kind of a mirrored version of what I got on the left hand side, like so. Again, I'll need to command and left click to deselect. Uh, and then I'm gonna create a, a path that favors the upper portion of the mouth in here. So these are just gonna be a series of left clicks, left click and let go, move on to somewhere else. And then just sort of matching that kind of uh, sinister looking mouth in there, like so. This will give us the basic path that we need. So you'll notice that in the path panel, as I have been clicking with the mouse, it's been capturing all of the points that I've added there. Now, that's just what's called a work path. It's a temporary thing. So you need to save it. And to do that, hover your cursor over the current name, work path, double left click, and in here it reads safe path. So you call this, uh, from here, I'm going to call this basic. Um, I'll click OK, and that saves it now inside of the path panel. Now, that has to be active, so it has to be highlighted in the path panel. You'll have to then go to the layers panel and click on the layer you want to add the flames onto. With those two key things in place, you can then go to the filter menu, go down the list to render, and you can choose flames. Note there are two other features that are similar. You can create picture frames and trees. Um, um, in our case, we're just going to go for flames. And you do get this message sometimes. So it depends how long your path is and how big the image is, but it's telling us that the preview can only accommodate something that's 3,000 pixels in length. So um, you, you, you'll have to click OK to that. There's no two ways about it. What this basically means is that it can show us the eyes, but in the preview, it can't show us all of the zigzag of the mouth. It's just missing from this section down here. So that's what he's talking about. But as long as we can see a general preview of most of those flames, this will be enough. And it's kind of, well, we've got to kind of just put up this really. So um, down right down at the bottom, under quality, first of all, start off by setting that quality to draft and it will render an update every time you change an option in here nice and quickly. Well, quicker than what it would do if it was on to, for high quality. That's the first step really. Um, you'll get uh, no doubt a basic overview in here. So one of the presets. Um, so I've got that because I've changed the quality to fast and draft, it set this to custom, but it was set to default. Uh, and then from here, you've got essentially five, six different, six different types um, of flames that you can choose from. Everything from making the flames follow the path to just going up the screen, multiple flames, different directions. Candlelight also very good. Um, you have to bear in mind that with things like candlelight, if I click on it to show an example, you'll have to draw the path in the right direction. So obviously candles for the most part, um, they the flame goes from the bottom to the top. You'd have to start by creating your paths by clicking at the bottom and then clicking the final lines somewhere higher up at the top. Now for us, for the flaming pumpkin, we need to change this to uh, multiple flames in one direction. And that's a preview that we get. And then from here, I'm going to work through the settings that I'd experimented with. So the, really, this is the longest bit you'll do is tweaking and playing around with all these sliders. 
So um, for the first one in here, the, the length, I'm going to set that to 300. And then I'm going to turn on the checkbox for randomized length in there. So sometimes it can be a little bit twitchy. Um, so I've got randomized length on. So generally speaking, it will be of a roundabout length for 300, but it will alter and slightly vary the different flames in there, the lengths. And then for width, well, I'm going to take the width up to 98 in here. I'm going to set the angle to zero. The intervals, uh, I'm going to set that to 44. And then um, if you're creating a ring of fire, so to speak, uh, no Johnny Cash intention there um, of a reference. But if you want to create a loop, you may want your flames when they join back from the start to the finish to kind of uh, stitch together nice and neat. I don't have that kind of appearance for my path, so I'm going to leave it on. It's got really no bearing, to be honest. Um, and then I'm going to go to the advanced tab in here. And we got some um, extra details that we can add for this. So uh, with this one, then I'm going to set the turbulence to 37. Um, the jag, the jagged lines of the flames, I'm going to set that one to 31. Opacity, I'm going to drop that a little bit. Um, so obviously, if the opacity is set really high, close to 100, it's, you're not going to be able to see through it. So I'm going to drop that a little bit even further um, and set that to 14. And then for the flame complexity, I'm going to drop this down to 5 in here. And then go to the flame bottom alignment and set that to 9. So it's closer to the uh, to the lines and the paths in there. Like so, if I click into a different field, you'll get the, the the shape and appearance of that in there. And then finally, I'm going to look to flame style. I'm going to set that. You've got normal, violent, and flat. I change mine to violent. And then for the flame shape, I you can have parallel. You have the flames pointing towards the center. I went for um, oval in this case. You can vary the arrangement of those. I turned on for this set of flames randomized shapes and with that done then um you can then go and you can click okay what i would tend to suggest is go back to basic though go to quality and set that to fine very slow to get a better quality of flame in the end in there and then with that done um you can click okay and it puts those flames once it's rendered them along the paths and into the layer that we created specifically for that and there you go. Um, those are the flames. So you'll probably find that there's a slight difference every time you choose that. And, and if it's not what you're looking for, you could always go to Command Z or Control Z. And then notice that the filter menu at the top, flame is there. So you could just add another flame layer, create some more paths if you want to. But that essentially is how you can create flames inside of Photoshop, folks. If you want to stick around and see me turn this into a green flame um, and look more ghoulish looking, then um, I will show you some extra tips for that. But um, that's the basic flame. So next thing, I'm going to click away from that path and then I am for now just going to hide this layer in here and I'm going to create a second set of flames because I want to get these kind of smoky flames coming out the bottom of the eyes. So I'm going to go back to my pen tool. All the options are still the same. And then I'm going to click, click and drag and follow the line of the path of the eye around here. Like so. Again, command and left click to disconnect. Click. Click and drag, just try and match the lines in there with a series of left clicks just to get that matching the bottom of the eyes of the pumpkin. Again, it will capture the clicks that I perform there to create the path. I'll double left click to save this path and then call this uh, details. Hit the return key, so that saves the path. I'll then go back to my layers panel, click on the background layer and then alt and left click to create a brand new layer. This one I'm going to call again details. Hit return. Make sure that's active and then I'll go back up to the filter menu and I'm not going to choose flame because I want a different type of flame in here. So I'm going to go back down to render and then choose flame. And then for this one, I am going to stick with multiple flames in one direction, but I'm going to change the size of this to be 333. Um, I'm going to keep randomized length turned on um, and for the width, I'm going to make this bigger. So um, I can change that to 163 once it's updated the last thing. So 163. Uh, angle again i'm going to leave that set to zero i don't want them pointing in a different direction i want them to go more or less straight up um, intervals at uh, this time i'm just going to uh, have a slight tweak on that um, change that to 47 again if you find that this is a bit slow you can always go back and change the uh the draft quality in there back to fast it'll be a little quicker to update I'll leave the checkbox turned on for intervals and loops and then no, you can you can always add your own custom flame color now, when you do that, you have to click in the box and it opens up a system color picker, which is a little bit 
weird, to be honest. Um, I would tend to say you're better off leaving the current flame color and then adding an adjustment layer to do that afterwards. Just do it in Photoshop. It, you'll find it a lot easier to work with. Um, I'll go back up to the Advanced tab. And if this one, the Turbulence, I'm going to leave set to 37. Jag to 31. Opacity, again, 14. The ones that I will change in here is Flame Complexity. So I'm going to drag this up here and just see what I get with this, dragging it right up towards the, the higher end. This is what I'm looking for. I want a lot of detail in my flame. I don't want long kind of uh, streaky flames. I want this to kind of feel like it's full at the back inside of the pumpkin in there. So that's set quite high. Flame bottom alignment. Um, well, for that one, I'm going to increase it. I just want to vary that a little bit like so and um uh, the the option down here then uh, i'm going to leave set to violent for the flame style and then the uh, flame shape i'm going to set that one to parallel um now for this one i'm going to turn off randomized shapes i'm going to go and then work with the arrangement down at the bottom so i'm not going to change this a lot i mean note you can go all the way over here so it's not going to radically change your flame. It's just kind of a different iteration of how the flames will appear on screen. So um, just experimenting with these just to try and get kind of a fill effect in there that I'm looking for. This is the bit that takes the most time, really, just experimenting and seeing what you get. That one, that seems OK. I'm fairly happy with that one. So when I'm done, go up to the top and I'll click OK. Again, it will render them, put them in their own layer. So that's the effect I was going for. I want to feel like it, there was a lot of a kind of flame at the top of the pumpkin in there obviously it'll show the paths so i'm going to click away from there and then i've got them in two separate layers so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to hide my flames and then i'm going to left click on the background layer in here because i want to change the color of the pumpkin to group to be green to be kind of more sinister and evil in there so for this i'm going to create a magnetic lasso selection so i'm going to zoom in a little bit closer and i will speed this this portion of the video up in here but i will show you the settings to start off with so uh, over in my tools panel click and hold down choose the magnetic lasso tool make sure this is set to a new selection up at the top feather set to zero anti-alias turned on i always leave that turned on uh, width for the size of the brush uh, sampling area in there 38 is fine for this image contrast i'll leave to 50 percent frequency i always leave to 100 so when it's putting little fastening pins around uh, my selection they're very close together i just find that it's quicker and easier and then I'll make my selection. So um, I will uh, be back in, in a minute, folks. And there we have it. That's my basic selection. Now, I will tidy this up. So I'm going to switch to probably in this case, I'll just go to the polygonal lasso tool. Make a, make sure, of course, that the mode is set to add to selection. Rest of the options in there, feather set to zero, anti is turned on. And then I, I do want to make sure that I don't have any bits of orange still creeping through in here. So I'm just going to go around, just add these bits in here. That seems to be all okay. I might just run that down a little bit further on that side. And then down here, um, that's all good. Um, I want to add this bit in as well. I don't want to make sure any of that's missing. And with that, I'm fairly happy. Um, above and beyond this, I will go to the select menu, down to modify, and then just choose um, expand and say um, let's go for something like uh, eight pixels and i'll expand that selection just to make sure i've got absolutely everything in that region in there um, and then with that done uh, i'll expand open my adjustments and my properties panel in there i'll go to because i've got selection in place a hue saturation i'll turn that on um, i'll then in my properties in here i'm going to change the um uh, the the color of this to a plus about plus 18 in there um, and then for the saturation i'm going to boost that as well to about plus 27 and then final one for the lightness i'm going to change that to uh, sort of a mid-teens in there something like that like so um now that's going to obviously change the color of the pumpkin in there but what i do want to do is just change the blend mode so down here go all the way down and then choose color in there so it's going to be more of a greeny color for the background in there so I'm, I'm all happy with that i'll zoom out a touch uh, and then from here well i'm going to um i'm going to select so for, uh, actually i'm just going to select the top two layers shift and left click and then i'm going to add those to a group so i'm going to go down to the bottom in here and click on the group icon and put them into a group i'll call that 
flames, unsurprisingly. Um, and then from here, well, I'm going to change the blend mode of these flames. Best if I turn them on, like so. I'm going to change those to be color dodge. So you can see I'm just moving through the different blending modes in here, like so. Now, obviously, it's not the final effect I want to go for because I want these flames to be green as well. So I'll uh, collapse that. I'll then, with no selection in place, go back to my adjustments panel, click on a hue saturation adjustment. But this time, I'm going to clip this to the group underneath so it only affects the flames. So I'll go to the panel flight menu with that um, adjustment layer active, go down to uh, create clipping mask. That will now only affect the group underneath it. Notice that gains a uh, an underline under it. Tells us that it's been affected by whatever's just above it. Those two have to be next to one another in the layers panel. And then from here, well, I'm going to change the options for this to, uh, well, quite simply, plus 60. Now, it might be that when you add that adjustment layer, you want to experiment with that. Um, see which one works best, really. Yeah, I might actually go for screen in this case. And then um, from there, um, I can expand the open. Uh, if you wanted to, you could change the blend mode of the one at the top as well. So with this one, I'm working down the list in here. Um, yeah, I think Hue works, uh, works quite well for this. Uh, I have that one turned on, and um, I think I need to go back to the original one in here. That's not quite changing it as much as I'd like, so I'm going to drag that across uh, like so. I will then, the final step is to go and change the way the, sh the shape of the flames are working. So for this, I'm going to um, hover over and right-click on this layer. It's got the, uh, the large flames in, and I'm going to choose to convert that to a smart object. And then going to go up to the filter menu at the top and choose liquify. Uh, now this won't show all the filters in here, so you kind of just got to got to got to go with the, uh, the preview it will show you. It's not accurate at the moment. Um, in terms of the backdrop, I'm going to change that to show um, the background layer, like so. I'll keep it nice and simple, and then I'll make sure the background layer is set behind the layer that I'm editing in here. Um, and with a uh, fully opaque for opacity in there. And then from there, um, it's a case of going to the forward warp tool. Um, it's set quite big in here. Might want to just reduce that a little bit, set the pressure a little bit lower as well. And then a case of just, um, you can always use the, the, the left and right square bracket key on the keyboard. I'm just going to pull and nudge those flames up a little bit. So it looks like they're coming just out the top of... Um, top of that layer in there like so at the top of the eyes and again click and drag and just pull those up a little bit like so and then down here again for these just sort of pull them around a little bit just to distort them a little bit just to give them a slightly more eerie look in there like so um, and I think with that done i'm fairly happy with that so this essentially the the liquify tool will allow you to kind of organically pull and push those things around on screen so with that one done i'm fairly happy I'll click ok to that and we get that kind of appearance inside of there so yeah after you've done i would say then that's really the point where you can experiment you can go back to the adjustment layer at the top because everything has been sort of edited individually you can modify this to suit your own needs really you know you can change all the different colors in there blues and, and all kinds of things so um, yeah, that essentially, folks, is how I made my ghoulish pumpkin inside of Photoshop. So a slightly longer one, uh, this video, but um, thanks for sticking around, folks. And um, uh, as always, you can subscribe and um, you can download these class files. And until next time, farewell, folks. Oh.